Hey guys, welcome to part three of our intro to 3D printing series. This is Rob with 3D Printscape, and today we're going to talk about infill patterns. We're going to break those down into four distinct sections, which is going to be low strength, standard strength, high strength, and flexible. So let's go ahead and jump in. Right, so as you can see from the screenshot there, Cura has 13 patterns that you can choose from. So what I did was I printed out all 13 of them and a blank one just to show what it looks like without any infill at all. So let's go. So our low strength patterns are really going to be obviously the no infill. Um, I had issues printing this. There's a lot of extra filament around the edges that I had to cut off. I would not recommend printing anything with zero infill unless you know for sure what you're doing and know that that's what you want. Uh, the next two are going to be your line and zigzag patterns. Uh, from a distance, they pretty much look the same and actually, well, up close, they pretty much look the same too. But there are some different settings in Cura between the two. Um, I have never actually needed to use either one of these. So I just wanted to make sure you know that they're there, but you may or may not use them. All right, so now let's jump over to our standard strength. Here we've got two triangle patterns, your standard triangle and then your trihex. So the trihex has the hexagons with the triangles and the triangles just have a bunch of triangles as you can see. Um, both of these are good standard strength infill patterns. They do not waste much of extra filament and are good options for uh, mini prints. Then your standard grid pattern which is going to be Cura's default setting as well. And this is what you're probably going to be printing nine times out of ten. If you're not thinking about it or you're not actually explicitly changing the infill, this is what you're going to get. Um, you've got your gyroid. This is one of my favorite. It looks cool. Uh, so if you're doing any type of time lapse videos or anything like that, um, I just like the way it looks and it builds up pretty nicely. But again, this is a really high strength infill and it does use a little bit more filament than some of the lower ones but if you're doing anything that requires additional strength it's worth it all right guys all right so now you have your octet and your quarter cubic these are both pretty close to each other they're kind of like the line and grid there are a couple differences you're not going to be able to really see them unless you're really really looking for them uh, you can make some adjustments and cure to make them stand out a little bit more, but you probably won't. Um, if you would like me to go into these in more detail, I can do that in another video, maybe a more advanced infill pattern video. Uh, if you'd like that, just leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And then your last ones under the high strength are your cubic infills. You got your standard cubic fill and then your cubic subdivision. Uh, these are similar to the triangles, but they have a little bit of an overlap, which makes it stronger. If you look closely, you can see how it kind of bridges up a little bit on the actual triangle. So it's not just a triangle coming straight up like the tri or tri hex. Uh, so that gives it a little bit more strength. All right, so let's jump over to our flexible infills. You've got your concentric infill, which follows the outside shape. Um, it's a decent overall infill if you're looking for flexibility. I have not had to use it. I prefer to use the cross, which I'll show you in a second if I'm doing anything with a flexible print. Um, all right, so here we have our cross and our cross 3D. The difference between the two is really the 3D effect that the 3D one gives you. Um, I don't think it makes any difference. I haven't actually looked into breaking strength or anything like that between the two. Uh, to me, it just looks cooler, but for functionality, I don't think it makes a difference. All right, so next I want to talk about what these coasters actually are. 
they are just generic coasters where I remove the top four layers. So instead of having the top completely flat like this one, um, the top four layers are removed, exposing the infill that's there. Uh, each one of these discs it took about an hour or so to print. So if you found any value to this video, please smash that like button and subscribe. It'll help us create more videos in the future.